Yo, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the Wisdom of the Way. And today we're going to talk about the CNN show um, Believers. Now I know that it they've already done like four episodes, so I got to catch up because I've only done a video on one. Um, so we're going to keep going. Matter of fact, let me see if I can wrap up. Nope, not going to do multiple ones in this video because that wouldn't be I wouldn't do it justice. So let's just do one. So the the after I watched the one on Christianity versus Voodoo, the next one that I watched was the Agori. And this is a, 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 a tribe in, I'm not a tribe, this is a religion in India that is about basic, the basic concept of this religion I think is beautiful. The basic concept is tantamount to something that many of you, who if you grew up Christian or Muslim or Jewish, you may have, you may understand, you may already understand and believe. Um, what they said is, what I think is beautiful about this religion, is that he said that Basically, what goes in the mouth doesn't defile you, but what comes out does. That's what they said, basically. They didn't say it in those exact words. But when they said that the outside world can't contaminate you, that you're not contaminated by the outside world, you're not contaminated by what you put in your body, the food, the water, the drink, you know, that doesn't contaminate you. That your spirit is divine and pure and clean. And that everyone's spirit is pure, divine, and clean. That was the overall message of the Agora. Now, of course, the first group that he went to go see took that like way extreme and scared the dickens out of him and i said dickens like an old dude but scared that man to death because this bruh started eating his own crap and he was i mean he, he was in a dangerous situation he was he was like the fringe of the agori and that's the thing you always got to recognize there's in every religion there's this fringe group that's going to be way out to the right that's going to take it to the extreme you know you don't have to i don't believe even though there is books like leviticus that tells you all these different animals that you shouldn't eat and unclean and that sort of thing now when i look at the leviticus i do try to follow most of it not because of religious reasons but simply because health reasons most of the stuff that they're telling you not to eat in the Leviticus is kind of nasty anyway. You know, pig will eat a pig will eat almost any other animal. So even though I still eat a little bit of pork, it's very much just bacon. This in the morning for my breakfast, but I really don't eat any other pork than that. Um, I don't eat um, like shrimp. And I don't eat any of the bottom feeders from the ocean. You know, if you're not a, if it's not a fish, it don't have scales and gills. I don't usually eat it, um, so I don't eat mussels and scallops and clams and shrimp and lobsters and crabs even though crab and lobster is good it tastes good i don't eat it because i know they're scavengers you know um so i get it some people may do it for health reasons i get it and i understand that you say you know peter had the little i think it was peter had the vision and was told to eat from the people's plate no matter what and, you know because it's not what defiles you so the agori um they have that and they and they also show it <clears throat> Because in their belief, one of the things that always troubled me about the Indian culture is that I always knew <clears throat> that originally the caste system was part of the religion. But um, because if you're at the top, you're called a Brahma and Brahmas are they, your Brahmas and Brahma is the, you know, top God. You know, he is the, the all, the, the one God of the, the Hindu. And we're not going to get into different archetypes and aspects, which is what the other ones represents. But here's the thing. Um, it was used to put people, the, the idea of karma was used to justify the caste system. And even though it's illegal in India today, it's still being used. There was a gentleman on there that I felt so bad for. His, he's considered a dom. The doms are the one who you had so much bad karma in your previous life that you are now the lower, you are such a lower class person. You don't even get a chance at education. And here again, education is the actual thing that is dividing the people. They're using religion to deny people access and education, which denies them the ability to raise above their, their caste status. That's the only thing. That's not karma. Because you got jacked up people who are Brahmas and you got jacked up people who are Doms. You got awesome people who are Brahmas. You got awesome people who are Doms. But the thing about it is that utilizing this religion to, and, and I hate it because I, Hindu is a very beautiful religion. Um, and a lot of his practices and a lot of his teachings are very peaceful. And a lot of them are about, you know, loving and caring for one another and the earth and all that kind of stuff. Even though the Ganges is like disgustingly nasty. 
Um, but it's really a beautiful religion in that sense of his, of his teachings. But here again, man is taking something beautiful and making it ugly. Making it ugly by denying people access to education, better health, better lifestyle, so that they can keep going. And this man has children, and his children are doomed to this. They have children, they're doomed to this. It's like, are you telling me that everybody, that his gene pool just naturally attracts other souls that had bad karma? But that, that's the part about it that really bothered me. But the Agori, the, when he went, when, when uh, Raza, went, Raza, Raza went to the other Agori, the ones who had a mixture of Brahmas and Doms and everybody else, and everybody learned together. The kids went to school together and learned together, and they played together, and they did everything together. You can tell the difference between any of them is because there is no difference between them. That character and quality of person is built on the life that you're living right now. So it was, it was, it was heartbreaking that the one man couldn't rise, raise himself out, that there's such a group that can't raise themselves out of their status simply because of education, and that education is denied based on a religious caste system. Now, even though the government's outlawed it, it's still present, and you, and you see it's present. But I, am, I was thankful that the, the, <laughs> the non-extremist gory, they recognized that, hey, this is, this, this, you know, this is BS that your karma is dooming you to this. Um, because that's not that's not what karma was truly about, you know. Karma is. I mean, I understand the concept, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody who's uh, Hindu and, or Buddhist for that matter, because they both talk about karma. I understand that when you satisfy your dharma, which is you you've 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 made up for all the bad karma that you put out, that then you will you know go to nirvana. You will have the Buddha head. You will you know cease to keep coming back and replicating this and be with the creator go back to source i get it but what i don't believe is that your karma only affects you into a caste system your karma will affect you into any system if you are a brahma and let's say you have and here you go brahmas this is good. you're a brahma and your business goes to hell in the handbasket you lose everything family members become sick and ill with diseases like cancer and AIDS and all these kind of diseases, you know, they're all Brahmas. Is it bad karma that they are afflicted with all these diseases that you're, you lose all your money and your worldly possessions? Did you do something in your karma that's causing you to lose all these things? Were you, uh, did you step and stomp on some poor innocent in order for you to make more money? Did you treat the poor widows and orphans harshly and so that you can make more money and live a better life and now it's circled back to you in this lifetime? You're a Brahma, but you're receiving some bad karma. So how do you put that only on the Doms? You can't, you shouldn't. You're violating those people's ability to live as prosperous a life as you live. But I applaud the Agori who are, you know, they are they they understand that we can educate all people and all people can have a decent life. Everybody should have an opportunity to have a decent life, you know, depending upon what they want to make out of it. And then let that be their karma. See, um, but the, for the 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 other gory who are the extremists, why do we always have to take things to the extreme? We don't. We don't have to take things to the extreme. You know. We create as men and women, as humans, as, as people. We defile our spirit by creating all these rituals and casts that says that we have to do this or we have to do that. That if you're not doing it my way, then you're not doing it the right way. That the only true Agori are the ones who sit out by the Ganges River and bathe in it daily, who defile their human body by eating excrements and eating brains and all that kind of stuff on a daily basis so that we can prove that this idea, this idea of that you can't contaminate, that you don't contaminate the body, that your body will die, that you're messing up your karma and all this kind of stuff in the Brahms and all that, that we have to go to these extremes to prove that we are right that you don't have, you don't have to you want to go to an expert extreme you want to prove to 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 everyone who believes in the caste system through their religion that it may not be the right thing 
educate all the people. Give everybody a fair chance to be educated. And let's see who rises and who falls. Let's see who increases their value to the community and who don't. Let's see those who, um, who, 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 who live out their greatness and who don't. Let's see those things happen. Let's see people in a world where everybody has a fair chance to compete. Now, I'm not saying everybody should get equal everything. No, but you should have a fair chance to compete. You should have a fair opportunity to see just how unequally you are. That if you deserve greater, then you should get greater. But if you don't, then you don't. You should have an opportunity to say that I want to build and amass wealth so that I can take care of people or take care of the poor. Or I just want to take care of my family. Whatever you want to do with it. But you should have an equal opportunity to do that and shouldn't be a birthright. It should not be a birthright. The only birthright you have is what your family teaches you initially and then what you grow into. That's your birthright. So the, the CNN show Believers, I'm, I am digging this series. Uh, I still got to do the, there was a, a, a cult that's supposed to be a world ending cult with Jesus with a J. That dude was funny. So I got to watch that one. And I'll do a video on that one after I watch it. And then the one that just aired Sunday, which was um, the Reformation of the Scientologists, which I found, I did see that one. That one I found very, very interesting on an esoteric level. So um, we're going to talk, I'll, I'll be putting out some videos about those this week as well. So y'all have a great one. I'm getting ready for my 1111 Path to Greatness video, live video on Coach Ren's Facebook page. So go over and join that if you haven't um, on Thursday, March 30th at, at, at 7 p.m. So we're going to start moving. And there's a spiritual part of it. That's the only reason why I'm mentioning it here, because there is a spiritual aspect of it. Because if you don't, whatever you believe in, you got to start living it, basically. You got to start living the tenets of what you believe, right? If you're not living those tenets, then you're doing damage to your spirit, right? But you need to understand those tenets, though. As far as this page is concerned, you really need to truly understand those tenets, where they came from, how they changed, how they were created, who is the authority that says that A is B and B is C? You really need to dig deep into it. Just stop taking it on the surface and then running with that. That's one of the reasons why these caste systems, why these kind of things still are in play because people, most people just take it for the surface and that surface is true and nothing else matters, just my surface and I don't want to dig any deeper because if I do, it may cause me to rethink everything that I've been taught my entire life. It may cause me to rethink everything I've been taught my entire life. And that's what the true agori are trying to teach, that we need to rethink everything we've been taught our entire life because this idea of a caste system of your dharma prisoning you in a shell of flesh that says that you are the lowest scum and shall not be touched. That's right, they call them the untouchables, that you couldn't be even touched. Imagine how that affects them when they go in for medical care, that they can't even be touched when you're sick. When an orphan baby is found in a Dom community and that baby just lies there and can't be touched, how does that affect that child as they grow up if they find themselves in a different environment? We are all spiritual beings. We are all spiritual beings made perfect in spirit. We're just dwelling in the poverty of the flesh. But we can get out of that. We can remove ourselves. We can live by the spirit and not by the flesh. You know, it's not what goes in that defiles us, but what comes out. Our words, our action, our activities, our vibration. Y'all have a great day. This is the wisdom of the way, and walk your path.